All right, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, alumni, current student athletes at Durfee High School, coaches, state and local government officials, family and friends of our inductees, and supporters of Durfee High School Athletics. Welcome to the 2024 Durfee High School Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Jeff Davis, Chairman of the Hall of Fame Committee and your MC for the evening. And I'd like to um, recognize our Hall of Fame Committee. And if you could be, stand and be recognized, Taylor Brown, Brad Buston, Jeff Karen, Nick Christ, Michaela Gagne, Bethany Guimon, Brendan Kelly, Craig Kupiak, BJ McDonald, Stephanie Mediate, Terry Pacheco, Emma Santoro, and Bill Thoran. The Hall of Fame Committee gets together usually every uh, February, March, we get together and we start the nomination process. We put out on uh, Facebook, uh, social media, uh, the alumni pages, and we ask for um, inductions. So you nominate the individual, um, and then we get to, we usually have until May 31st to submit the uh, uh, nominations. We then um, vote sometime in June after we vet to make sure what you actually write down on the paper is true. So we, we have to do some vetting. And then basically to be a member of the Hall of Fame, you have to get 70% of the vote. So there's 14 of us, so roughly you have to get about 10, 10 out of the 14 votes uh, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And then we have our, uh, we sell tickets and we have the event usually in October, November. So I just wanna thank you all. I wanna thank our sponsors, uh, Bay Coast Mortgage, Waring Sullivan Funeral Homes, St. Anne's Credit Union, and Nicholas and Bridget Christ. And we want to thank you for making this night possible. And now it is my honor to welcome to the stage the newest members of the two class of 2024 Durfee Athletic Hall of Fame. From the class of 1986, Tim Plant. From the class of 1990, and my classmate, Rainy Gagnon. From the class of 1991, Brandon Bouchard. From the class of 1995, Carrie Doyle. From the class of 1997, Rhonda Pacheco. From the class of 2000, Kevin Narciso. From the class of 2009, Emma Santoro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and being inducted this evening under our special inductee mm -hmm. category, Coach Flo Lima. A couple of things before uh, we get started. Are there any other Hall of Fame members uh, in the audience this evening? I'll have you stand to be recognized. Hall of Fame member, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and
And at this time, I just want to make, uh, take a, have a moment of silence for uh, our Durfee Hall of Fame members that we lost this past year. Thank you. I believe the staff at White's here is ready for us to eat, so folks will have you take your seats and they will direct you to the buffet and we'll be back uh, about 45 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna thank you all for being a part of this special event as we pay tribute to the indelible mark this coach and these athletes have made on Durfee's High School rich athletic history. Being a Durfee High School Athletic Hall of Fame member is truly a unique honor. Um, and few can claim that. Of the thousands of athletes that have worn the Durfee uniform, only 306 individuals, 15 state championship teams, and 15 special inductees can claim that honor. <clears throat> Each member has uh, demonstrated an exceptional talent on and off the field, dedication to their sport, and uh, contributed to the legacy of the school, quite honestly. And, um, and we'll get started. So <clears throat> the moment we've all been waiting for at this time, I want to introduce to you a member of the Hall of Fame 1995 State Championship Baseball Team, Coach Glenn Chatterton, who will introduce Tim Plant. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the honorees tonight. Like Jeff said, you know, there's thousands of athletes have gone through Durfee and not only you were successful as an athlete, but also as a student. Tim was a three-year athlete at Derby, with baseball being his most successful sport. He led the SEC in hitting his senior year at 452, and later went on to help his team win the South Coast Championship. I didn't have the privilege of coaching Timmy at Derby, the two people, well, Timmy Lefrec was the freshman coach, and the two people that played a big role in Timmy's success on the baseball diamond was Ray Medeiros and Bruce Clark, who within the past year, they have passed away, and we lost people. We, we lost two great men that dedicated their lives to educating and teaching athletics and life skills. Timmy, you know, they started us off because we're the oldest people. I don't know if you were or I were, <laughs> but I think I am, so that's all right. All right. Um, after having a stellar career at Bridgewater State College, Timmy went into coaching and he went into teaching. And for 34 years as an educator, in 33 years as a coach, it's quite an accomplishment for having a Durfee student athlete reach out to so many young children and adults. And that just something that Timmy's brought to us, not just on the athletic fields, but in the classrooms. And now he's the big shot. He's the principal at the elementary school. So <laughs> that's a plus for him. Imagine a kindergarten watching up to Timmy and seeing how big he is, whoa. <laughs> All right. Timmy's still coaching right now, the love of basketball. He's at Bristol Plymouth. He's seeking out his 200th win in basketball, which is a great achievement for you, Timmy. And he coached five years at Fairhaven, and both the five years he brought the teams to the South Sectional. So that was accomplishment in baseball. Tim gives his credit a lot to his father, his little league coach, Jim Brillo, 
and the coaching staff at Durfee, and not just the coaching staff, but the teachers and the administrators there that made him a well-rounded athlete and a well-rounded student. And for that reason, that is why he's been so successful in his career, not only on the athletic field, but in the classroom and as a principal. It's my honor to introduce Timmy Plant into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I've been doing uh, elementary principal for a while, and those little kids are not afraid of me, Glenn. Okay? <laughs> they see that I'm a big teddy bear. Uh, they know, but they're, they're great, and uh, it's interesting. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to thank Glenn uh, for the great introduction that he did. Uh, good evening uh, to everybody. Uh, I want to first thank the Hall of Fame uh, Committee for this incredible honor. Uh, to induct into the Durfee High Hall of Fame is something I never imagined. Uh, being a hilltopper, which is a big thing, and representing Durfee across three sports, uh, football, basketball, and baseball, uh, has been a defining part of who I am. So standing here tonight, it's incredibly special for me. I owe so much to all the people who supported me through my career, all uh, my coaches, start off with a few, uh, Mr. Winowski, uh, Mr. Botello, Mr. Faraz, uh, Mr. Olilla. Uh, I can tell you a quick story of Mr. Olilla. Uh, he was a very uh, interesting man. I remember sophomore year, we're running the scout team, and uh, you know we're, we're getting pounded by the big boys, and someone gave a cheap shot to uh, myself. And Mr. Olilla was so angry, he strapped on that helmet, and he got in the game. He said, go over there, Timmy, go see the trainer, whatever. And thank God Mr. Pelican was there. Uh, and he went in there, and he just took everybody on. <laughs> so that was the kind of man that he was. He was a great guy. Uh, moving on to Mr. Uh, Mr. Campbell, Mr. Karam, uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. Medeiros, uh, all of you shaped me in a different way. I'm grateful for the lessons you taught me on and off the field, whether it be the court, uh, the field, the diamond. Uh, I took a little bit of each of every one of you into my own coaching career. Uh, whether it was toughness, strategy, uh, discipline, or how to bring out the best in your players, uh, because those lessons, I was able to become a successful coach myself. Always keeping in mind the impact of a great coach can have. During my coaching career, I hoped I changed many lives of players for the better, just as my coaches at Durfee did for me. At my time at Durfee, after it was done, I went on to play college baseball, and I had a pretty good career there. Uh, I played with Mr. Boston, as he knows, um, and we had a great time out there with Coach Tufts. And we'll keep those between ourselves, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, those were an extension, that was an extension of what uh, Durfee gave me, a chance to compete at a high level and to grow as both an athlete and a person. My college experience deepened my love for the game and it was a direct result in everything I learned again at Durfee. Of course, now here comes the soft part of me. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> I'd like to thank my dad. When I was a kid, he pushed me. I apologize, guys. I'm sorry. I'm usually pretty good with this, but <laughs> it'll be 20 years this year. Got this. This is my sister, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
I kept telling myself I wasn't going to do this, but I did. You got this. Yep. But again, he, he helped me throughout everything, and I, I really respect him. For playing for Durf, he meant everything to me. I remember walking into my first football game as a freshman, seeing the sea of red and black in the stands, and realizing what a privilege it was to resent, represent this school. Uh, whether it was Saturday afternoon, I mean, you guys younger, you get to play Friday night games. We just played <laughs> Saturday games. Uh, it wasn't that great, but uh, uh, it was fun. But the stands were packed. We probably had over 1,000 people at these games. The bands were there, 100 people per band, fans. It was, it was insane uh, and intense. Um, basketball games was standing room only. I mean, you had to get there for the JV game just to get in. Uh, and that atmosphere was something I'll never forget. Each sport brought me something different out of me. Football taught me physical to be toughness and grit, how to push through challenges, both physical and mentally. Basketball taught me how to have teamwork, to trust the players beside me, and to perform under pressure. And baseball taught me to be patient and strategy and to stay calm and how to bat, bounce back from mistakes and how to seize opportunities when they came. Together, these sports made me a better athlete, but more importantly, they made me a better person. The competition was fierce, uh, but what stands out most are the friendships I made along the way. Some of my best memories are from long bus rides. Again, you guys don't remember this. Uh, this is 40 years ago. We used to travel to Dennis Yarmouth and Barnstable and all these crazy places uh, to play, and the competition was incredible. Uh, it, was, it was really, really great thing. Um, my coaches, teammates, family, and friends, thank you. This honor is much yours as mine. Let me share a quote from one of my biggest coaching inspirations, John Wooden. A good coach can change a game, but a great coach can change a life, like Glenn said. I carry those words with me throughout my coaching career, and after all the years and all the athletes, I've had the privilege to coach. I hope I've been able to change lives to the better. I am incredibly proud of what they have accomplished both on and off the field, court, and diamond. All I owe this, all my years playing athletics at Durfee. The foundation I built here shaped me into an athlete, a coach, a person, and who I am today. I also, I also had the privilege of coaching my two boys as they were growing up, which is something I'll never forget. Watching them develop their skills and love for the game while sharing moments as a coach and father was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I forever be proud to be a Durfee Hilltopper. Thank you again for this incredible award. And thank you to my sister. <laughs> And at this time, I'll ask that Michelle Gagnon, please come forward to introduce her husband, Rainy Gagnon. You're in trouble now. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Unfortunately, Rainy's coach, Dave Ozek, couldn't be with us tonight due to an illness but we do wish him well. So as Rainey's wife, I am deeply honored to present on his behalf and share with you the remarkable athletic legacy of my husband, Rainey Gagnon. I also want to take a moment to recognize Rainey's biggest fan, his daughter, Sam. Her love and admiration for her father made tonight possible in so many ways. I also want to thank Coach for taking the time to speak with me, even when it was obviously difficult for him. If he could, and I'm quoting, he could talk about Rainey for hours. So I guess you guys are lucky with me tonight. <laughs> uh, what Coach was able to share with me when he spoke about Hilltopper's excellence is that Rainey exemplified it. His achievements in cross country and track weren't just crossing the finish lines. They were about pushing boundaries and setting new standards 
what Durfee athletes can achieve. During his time, Rainey led the team to two undefeated dual meet seasons, a feat that demonstrated not just his individual talent, but his ability to inspire excellence in his teammates. In 1989, he held seven of the 10 top fastest times ever run by a Durfee runner, and four of the top fastest times run by all male runners from all schools who competed on the Durfee course. The numbers speak volumes. Fourth place at State Coaches Invitational, dual fifth place finishes in his division at the Eastern Massachusetts Championship, but perhaps his most groundbreaking achievement was becoming the first Durfee male runner to qualify all state championship where he placed an impressive 19th. Tonight, Rainey joins an elite group as only the third male athlete to be inducted in the Durfee Hall of Fame for track and cross country. Coach Ozek being first and Ronnie Ferreira second. But what truly sets Rainey apart isn't just the medals or the records, it's the character traits that made these achievements possible. Dedication, discipline, and determination that taught him to push through pain, to find that extra gear when his body wanted to quit, and most importantly, humility. The understanding that every victory and what he thought at the time where his failures were his greatest stepping stones to the next challenge. Now in his 50s, but he still looks like he's in his 30s, early 30s, okay? Rainey continues to embody the spirit of athleticism, and that's being celebrated here tonight. Whether he's catching waves on a surfboard, carving down ski slopes, scaling rock faces, trekking mountain trails, golfing every chance he can, and I mean every chance he can. <laughs> or cycling through our neighborhood on his BMX bike, which my neighbors love. He proves that the heart of a true athlete never stops beating. His passion for active living hasn't dimmed with age. If anything, it burns brighter, inspiring everyone around him to embrace life's adventures, including myself. Thank you, Rainey. I hope that all current student athletes look at Rainey's legacy here is someone who just didn't excel in high school sports. He made athletics a cornerstone of a well-lived life. Rainey, your induction tonight isn't just about commemorating past achievements. It's about celebrating a lifetime commitment to athletic excellence and personal growth. You've shown us that being an athlete isn't just about what you do in competition. It's about how you live your life, how you face challenges, and how you inspire others to reach their potential. To that end, a heartfelt congratulations to all Durfee inductees tonight. And on behalf of the Durfee High School athletic community, and as your proud wife, I am honored to welcome you into the Durfee Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Rainey. This honor is truly deserved. Oh boy, I feel like she said it all. I don't have to go through this eight pages of uh, speech here. So it's so amazing to see everybody tonight. So let me th start by thanking everyone for coming out on this special occasion. Your decision to be here brings an added level of importance to receiving this honor. Thanks to my parents that could be here tonight and celebrate this achievement with me. Special thanks to all of my coaches. Coach Ozug, my cross country coach, Coach Mo, my winter track coach, and Coach Taylor, my spring track coach. I have vivid memories of all of you cheering me on to, to my many wins and a couple of losses. Please know that you have served as positive role models and symbols of structure in my life, which at that time was something I desperately needed. And thank you for helping me to discover the sense of pride one feels from working out hard and encouraging me to push myself to the absolute limit. Thank you to the Hall of Fame committee. I mean, your job was pretty easy. You saw how nasty I was, so it's like. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, 
My deepest thanks. I hope all of you understand just how important this is for me after this speech. Thanks to my son Kyle and my daughter Samantha, who is the one who nominated me for the Hall of Fame. Both of you have given me the gift of making me such a proud father with all of your hard work you both put in to make yourself and your families better. And a special thanks, an extra special thanks to my wife Michelle, who endured listening to me and helping me sort out my thoughts for tonight. I probably haven't cried like that in years. And hopefully I'm all cried out tonight. It's been a tough week, but we'll see. You know, I wish it was easy to just go back to that time in my life and just think about the great things that I achieved. But I'm an artist, and we are overthinkers. And we perceive the world around us on a very deep level. So when I go back to that time and dig around in those memories, a lot of the trauma I endured also comes to the surface, which is a good thing. I've learned that we as humans need to sort through our baggage and face it head on if we are ever going to be at peace with ourselves. So revisiting my past on a deep level has been an emotional journey, as well as a fact-finding mission. And I've been racking my brain for over the last couple of weeks trying to figure out just how best to articulate how incredibly important being inducted into the Durfee Hall of Fame is for me. And I can tell you that not in a million years did I ever think my running achievements at Durfee would have led me to be inducted into the Durfee Hall of Fame. I honestly never gave it a single thought. Because for over 30 years, I have viewed, viewed the end result of my time at Durfee to be a failure. Sure, in the moment, achieving what I did was amazing, but it was the way that it ended that ruined all of that for me. So for 30 years, I found myself incapable of rel relishing in my athletic, athletic achievements, and I let one bad experience win the day. I have been haunted by this notion of what could have been, had a single moment in time played out differently. So tonight is about celebrating this induction, but it's also about a conversation that took 30 years to take place. And without being inducted, that conversation might not have ever taken place. Now, there have been a couple of times in the last decade where people whose opinion I respect regarding Durfee sports had questioned why I wasn't in the Durfee Hall of Fame and that I should be in the Hall of Fame. I honestly thought they were nuts. I remember thinking to myself, why? I, I completely messed up everything. And why the hell would they want to put me in? I didn't go on to compete in college or professionally which I thought was a prerequisite to getting into the Hall of Fame. Then a few years ago, the Herald News named me as one of the top 10 cross-country runners of all time, which did get me thinking, maybe I could be considered for the Hall of Fame. So if you took the time to read what I wrote in the program, you would think that I transferred to Durfee, collected all of my great athletic achievements, And because of my love of art outweighed my love of running, that I chose to attend art school instead of going on to run at a university. The bio is very linear and wrapped in a tight little bow. It reads like that young man had it all figured out and rationally thought out his prospects to get to where he is today. Yes, all of those things did happen. But the life events that fill in the cracks of that bio are so much more complicated. What that bio doesn't tell you is that upon my transfer to Durfee sophomore year, I was unable to compete until spring track due to repeated bouts with strep throat. It doesn't tell you that I didn't get to graduate with my peers in the class of 1989 because I had course requirements to make up from my sophomore year. It doesn't tell you that I was a graffiti artist writing my name all over the city and getting into repeated legal trouble. It doesn't tell you that I was in a rap group with a signed recording contract which drew my attention away from running and my schooling. It doesn't tell you that I would father two children by the end of 1989. And it doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you that Coach Ozug went through the trouble to obtain a waiver so I could comp compete for a, fifth senior year, for a fifth year in high school. And most importantly, it doesn't tell you I walked away from competing that fifth year over a disagreement with Coach Ozug. 
Now, I'm not sharing that info, info with you because I want you to view them as excuses as to why I didn't go on to take advantage of all the amazing opportunities in running that were being offered to me by some of the, well -known, mo some of the most well-known universities in the country. I'm telling you those because it's those things that led me to believe that I would never be worthy enough to receive what I view to be a very prestigious accolade being inducted into the Durfee Hall of Fame. This accolade enables me to look back at the tumultuous time in my life in a positive way and understand that those memories, both good and bad, are just a collection of lessons that needed to be learned. I mean, wow, when I look back now, I have an extraordinary collection of great memories being on the cross country and track teams. I can still recall so many specifics about every race I ran. I remember running my fastest mile on the indoor track at Harvard and the fast paced and chaotic nature of track meets where there was just so much going on at once. I remember the many invitationals run at beautiful Franklin Park. And I think most importantly, I remember the solitude of running through the woods during cross country. Running in solitude surrounded by nature is something I continue to enjoy today. I think running in general is a pretty solitary experience. It's you using your body to fly over the surface of the earth as fast as you can. I still feel like I fly when I run today, but I'm 50 pounds heavier and my mile times have doubled, but I still feel the same way as I did when I was a teenager. I also remember celebrating with my teammates when we won championships. Coach Taylor probably understands this the best because most of us on the championship spring track team showed up at his house in the middle of the night and he was gracious enough to let us in. <laughs> These memories are so rich and still very vivid despite the passage of time. So profound that a decade after graduating, I returned to the old Durfee track for one of my daughter's sporting events and I broke down in tears. I think some of those tears were due to the, the nostalgia of it all. And I'm sure some of them were because I didn't achieve what I thought I could achieve. But I think the majority of them were due to the way I had walked away from competing. As most of us do, the older we get, we embark on a healing journey. We analyze the things in our past that we hold on to. And one thing that kept coming to the surface was this event with Coach Ozug. It was this unresolved circumstance that just, I just couldn't get over. And I have held on to this one single moment in time for the over 30 years, and I thought that that one single day completely changed my life's trajectory. I carried an incredible amount of shame because Coach Ozig and I never resolved what took, took place on the first day of cross country practice in 1989. I thought I let him down, the rest of my coaches down, and more importantly, myself. Now it's been over 30 years and I do consider myself to be successful. So I wouldn't say the past necessarily held me back. I went on to have a great teaching career at Durfee. I achieved many of my personal and artistic goals and I, enjoy, and I still enjoy a variety of sports to this day. And as my wife mentioned, I have continued to embody the spirit of athleticism. So fast forward to when I found out I was gonna be inducted and learned that I needed to find a past coach to introduce me. I had a wave of anxiety and uncertainty. I hadn't talked to Coach Ozug in almost 15 years, and I was unsure of what his reaction would be. And I was the most fearful that he would think I didn't deserve this honor. I was able to muster the courage to contact him and talk about that fateful day in 1989. When we got on the phone, we exchanged the typical pleasantries, how have you been, you still running? which yes, he still is running. He informed me that he ran up the seven hills 10 times on his 70th birthday. The man is a machine. And I know I still owe my city cross country championship to him because he loved running us up that damn hill for practice. <laughs> so when I finally approached the topic of the day that I had departed the team, he could not have been more gracious and without getting into all the details, he told me that there was nothing I needed to be sorry for. This is one of those moments, I wish I had the courage and wherewithal to resolve sooner in my life. 
After over 30 years, I had finally been given my closure. And it was this situation, being inducted into the hall, that allowed this to happen. So thank you. Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so there is a funny part here. So as the conversation went on with Coach Ozug, we transitioned into talking about the Hall of Fame. And he began asking me all these questions about specifics, about uh, particular races, um, what, certain accomplishments, how many years that I had run for him, and uh, telling me that he was going to have to go back and dig into his records. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I think he thinks the real reason I called him is to get him to nominate me for the Hall of Fame, which I can tell you right now, he takes very, very seriously. I had to stop him mid-sentence, and I'm like, Coach, whoa. I'm like, I'm already in the Hall of Fame, which <laughs> I'm here to, in I'm, 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 I'm calling you to see if you will introduce me on induction night, which I know we really wanted to be here tonight. And it's unfortunate, but he was just beyond thrilled. And yes, I did ask him, do you think I deserve this honor? Because quite frankly, if he didn't think I deserved it, I don't, know, I don't know if I would be up here tonight. And he said, yes, absolutely. And that melt the world to me. So you see, tonight is more about just recognizing my athletic achievements and the Hall of Fame induction. It's about reconciliation. I am so grateful for the way everything has turned out. So as I stand here tonight, I'm now able to look back on my life and not put so much emphasis on that one decision I made. I've come to realize that our lives are dictated not by just one decision. Our lives are a collection of decisions that bring us to a certain moment in time. And I am convinced that even if I had gone on to run for a prestigious university and continued to collect my running achievements, that I would still be exactly where I am today. An artist, a career-long Durfee educator with a profound love for his alma mater, and an individual who has found some peace and closure in his life. And when I retire and my teaching legacy has faded away, I'm going to relish in the fact that my legacy will live on forever as a Durfee Hall of Fame inductee. All of this has left me feeling what I'm feeling tonight at this very moment. Unbelievably proud of myself. Thank you. And now I ask Durfee Hall of Famer Doug Smith to please come forward to introduce his teammate and classmate, Brandon Bouchard. Thank you, Jeff. Um, honored to be here tonight, uh, introducing my good friend and uh, who I've known for four decades plus. Um, and his family, um, so congratulations. Um, I've known Brandon um, since we were nine years old, playing Little League Baseball, and we've been, we've been great friends ever since. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about Brandon. I'm not gonna give you his stats. Uh, it's, it's in, the, uh, it's in the, the, the pamphlet you have tonight, but I, uh, we started playing together in baseball, and uh, and then I think it was the nine and ten year old all star team we played on together. Um, and that's uh, when I first got to really know Brandon. And, uh, you know, he is, when he was back in, when he was nine years old, he was like 70 pounds soaking wet, like he's all legs. And everyone took him for granted. And, and, and um, that was to their detriment because I got to see what a great athlete he was. He was always one of the star players on the team, one of the best pitchers, one of the best hitters, and he continued to let our teams on to state championships, and I got to see firsthand what a real amazing athlete he was. 
Um, we, uh, we met on the baseball field, but we very quickly realized we had a passion together, and that was uh, playing golf. Um, we started playing together at Fall River Country Club. Um, we were about 12 years old, and uh, we used to play in all the youth, to youth tournaments in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And uh, we, on the positive side, we like, quickly realized we'd found somebody who challenged each other on the golf course, um, but at the same time, we quickly realized that playing matches against each other was not a good thing, because we didn't take losing easily at all. I certainly didn't, and if anyone knows Brandon, he did not take it well at all. <laughs> so we quickly realized like, playing against each other was not a good thing, so we, what we did is we, uh, we realized we had to like, pair against, uh, be on the same team and, and take on others, and that's what we did. So we'd play the golf course when we were playing by ourselves, and then um, my good friend Brandon, would, he would set up matches all the time for us, and we would play others. And because of Brandon, and a little help from me, um, we, would win, we would win most of those matches. Um, and I have actually an interesting uh, story uh, in regards to that. So <laughs> he's, uh, if anyone who knows Brandon here, he's, he likes to place a wager on sports. You know, let's say so. And, you know, over the years, um, he's made a lot of those wagers, and he made it, he, but he's always willing to bet on himself. And so after our senior year in high school, uh, Brandon and I were selected to play on a team from the United States that um, went to Scotland to play uh, the Scottish team at Carnoustie in St. Andrews. And we're on the plane flying over the Atlantic, and I don't know, I'm reading a book. There was no TVs on planes back then. And Look, next thing I know, Brandon is talking to all these kids on our team who are like these great players from all around the country, and he's setting up matches with them. He's like, yeah, Doug and I are going to take you on, and we get to St. Andrews, and, you know, we're, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, like, I'm like, we're just two schleps from Massachusetts, and like, what are we going to do? So we get off the plane, and, and you know these kids have caddies and four caddies, and he and I are like, we, we, we don't have any money. We barely had enough money to get on the plane and get over there. And, and we wind up playing matches against several kids at St. Andrews and other courses, and of course, lo and behold, Brandon brings his A game, and we win those matches. And the benefit for me was some good drinking money for the trip, so <laughs> I was happy. Um, but that's what he's all about. He's, he's a gamer, he's a great competitor, um, and he's an amazing athlete. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had this distinct pleasure of both competing against Brandon um, as a golfer, but I've also had him as a partner and as a teammate for four years at Durfee um, and as a good friend. And I've been playing competitive golf since I was 10 years old in tournaments, um, in high school and youth golf and in college, and I can say unequivocally that Brandon is one of the most talented and competitive golfers I've ever played against. Um, and, you know, it's a real honor that Durfee has him in his Hall of Fame because he's, he's just that good. Um, he, he didn't always have the greatest physical attributes. Like I said, he was 70 pounds soaking wet when he was a kid playing Little League. But um, he had amazing athleticism, and most importantly, he had an undying will to compete and win. And, you know, they always say that real competitors hate losing more than they even like winning. And that's Brandon in a nutshell. He, it helped propel him to success on the baseball diamond, the softball diamond, and on the golf course. And um, that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. So, Brandon, come on. Let me say I'm not a public speaker, but I'm going to do my best here tonight. <laughs> Good evening. My speech tonight will be about saying thank you, as I wouldn't be standing here today without the help of so many people. Thank you to the committee for voting for me and recognizing the sport of golf. I am, a, I am honored to be part of this amazing class of coaches and athletes. 
Coach Tom Botello for nominating and believing in me. Thank you to my friends and family who are here tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. Durfee golf coach Rich Roy and all my teammates along the way, especially Doug Smith, Hall of Fame class of 2010. Not only were you a great teammate, but you've been my best friend since nine years old. You and your parents, Terry and Everett, were my second family. I owe a thank you to the past members of the Fall River Country Club. You helped finance a kid's dream of playing international golf and made it a reality. To my brothers and sisters, Debbie, Donna, Bill, and Brian, I don't know where I'd be without you today. You've been in my corner throughout my life, and you can continue to do so today. My wife, Jen, of course, for putting up with me and being the rock of our family. You are the best mom and wife Jack and I could ever ask for. My dad, who introduced me to the sport of golf at age five, and teaching me patience and discipline. My mom, who is here tonight, who had five Bouchard kids, and for anybody that knows us, that can't be easy. <laughs> you are the hottest worker I have ever known. In the best and toughest of times, one thing was for certain. You were there for me unconditionally. You drove me around New England and to the Nationals making sure I was exactly where I needed to be. You are the best mom I could ever ask for. Thank you for everything you've done for me. As I close, I would like to thank the committee again, for you have given me a special gift that you don't know about. I get to share this special night with my son, Jack, he is currently a three-sport athlete at Durfee, an excellent student, but even a better young man. Jack, don't let anyone tell you you're not good enough. Don't let anyone or anything get in the way of what you want to accomplish in life. Mom and I are so proud of you. The world is yours. Thank you, and go Hilltoppers. I have the privilege and honor to introduce Carrie Doyle Souza into the Hall of Fame tonight. These brackets that you see up there represents Carrie's name, but also when you walk into the Hall of Fame at Durfee, you'll see your grandfather and a father also in the Hall of Fame. So what an accomplishment for the Doyle family to have three names on the board that when you walk into the Hall of Fame, you probably get the most popular name on the boards. <laughs> Her uncle Jack was in the Hall of Fame, and Bishop Stang. I don't know why he went there, but <laughs> I think Don Monta would be upset with that right now, right, Jack? <laughs> All right, Kerry. You know, when Tommy Burns and I caught, you know, we were like family. And there's a lot of teammates in here that Tommy had, had Tommy Burns and I had had here. And Tommy had a couple of daughters and I didn't. And they became like pinch hitters for me, for daughters that I could use sometimes for babysitting. <laughs> and Kerry, was one of my babysitters. And then her sister, Chrissy, also babysat for me. And I remember just joking, Kerry, the first night she came over to babysit. I go, Kerry, the two girls in front of you babysat my kids, are Lori Farquhar and Kelly Monty. They're both female athletes of the year, so I don't want to put on any pressure on you. <laughs> but she did come athlete of the year, and proud of that. You know, a couple of things about Kerry. It was her passion and her desire and her leadership that made her special. She was always willing to go the extra mile. She hated to lose. I don't know if that's in 
you know, hereditary, <laughs> I think it is. I remember watching your dad play. Um, and, you know, her leadership qualities, if you look in the pamphlet tonight, she was captain of a lot of sports. So a lot of her teammates looked up to her, to her and Tommy and I, Burns, did too. One funny thing about Kerry was that Tom Burns used to say just about the first day of practice, you got five fouls, make the first three count. <laughs> Terry didn't need that, not with her Irish blood. <laughs> and I remember one time when she played for me at the JVs as a freshman, she got a reach in foul, which is a lazy foul we call. And I looked at her and she looked at me and she didn't give me the look of love. And the last three years with her playing with the varsity, every once in a while, I look at her and she would look at me. The other, there's so many funny stories I could tell. You know, like trying to teach Carrie her freshman year how to do a left-handed layup. I don't know if you remember that, Carrie, but you want to make you wouldn't have made Dance with the Stars. <laughs> you know. But, you know, Terry became part of the family. He helped us, uh, she helped us lead the way her senior year in scoring and rebounding. But the most thing I'll take from Kerry is her want you as a friend and a friend of the family. I love you, Kerry. Thank you. Good evening. Woo, it's a little loud. Thank you to my family, friends, teammates, coaches, inductees, Hall of Fame committee, and especially to Coach Chatterton for introducing me here tonight for this prestigious honor. Being a Durfee athlete was such an amazing experience for me. I have so many great memories, such as beating Brockton in triple overtime, getting a wink from Coach Z when he would say, Doyle, do your thing which meant box out the girl next to me and take my rebound. That line he told you about the falls was true. I fouled out often. <laughs> Having the team meet at my house so we could braid our hair on game day and have raid the snack cabinet that my parents left for us. Thanks, Mom and Joe. Hanging out with Tammy the trainer because, well, she was just awesome. Or quickly realizing that the term double sessions was not a reward. Walking into the gym on game day was surreal. The crowd, the lights, the banners, the red and black. It created such a special feeling, a spark. My senior year, we finally convinced Coach Burns to get us new uniforms. Thanks, Coach. And I remember feeling so proud to leave them behind for the next generation. I truly value the friendships formed with my teammates and sharing the excitement of achieving success together. In fact, one of my former teammates, Rhonda Pacheco, is also being acknowledged tonight. post Durfee, I went on to play college volleyball, again, where I later learned that there was also something called triple sessions, still not a reward. I knew I was in trouble when my coach announced that our Monday practices would begin with running a timed mile. She was a, had an intense training plan, but it paid off as we went on to win my division my senior year. Post-college, the three Ds, dedication, desire, and discipline have continued to guide me throughout my life and help mold the person I am today. Throughout my professional career, I've always been in leadership roles, and I've really embraced the challenges that have come my way. Durfee has prepared me for the unknown and has empowered me to be confident in making decisions. As I stand here tonight to accept this award, I'm excited to share the experiences through the eyes of my own children. Whether it's watching the joy of my daughter's face, Laurel, when she's mastered her flip turn in swimming, or watching my son, Luke, 
throw a touchdown pass. It's a feeling that never goes away, that spark. I'll also be the third generation of Doyles to be inducted. In fact, my dad, most of you know as Tommy Doyle, been hearing it my entire life, Tommy Doyle's daughter. He's also here today and came in from Florida to be here with my stepmom, Donna, and thank you. I am so proud to continue the Doyle tradition and the legacy, and I look forward to following all the future stories of the Hall of Famers. I feel so fortunate to be recognized today, and I am both humbled and overjoyed to be considered for this award. Thank you again to the, my family and the Durfee family for igniting that spark. And at this time, I would like to invite Hall of Famer and committee member Michaela Gagne to step forward to introduce Rhonda Pacheco. Good evening, everyone. I met Rhonda when I was in the sixth grade. And while she and my sister Rachel became fast friends as freshmen at Durfee, she immediately became a role model to me. Getting to play with her for one year when I was a freshman was even better. Rhonda had impressive accomplishments during her career at Durfee, including incredible basketball stats that led to her playing Division I at URI on full scholarship and serving as a captain for two years in college. As a Hilltopper, she earned MVP honors both in basketball and softball and received the prestigious BMC Durfee Athlete of the Year Award. What always amazed me about Rhonda, however, was that she was that natural athlete who could take anything on. In addition to incredible achievements in basketball and softball, she played four years on varsity soccer, having never stepped foot on the field before. She was that athlete. That in itself is a rare feat. To know Rhonda, however, was to understand her dedication and love for being an athlete. I remember her mother saying that she, pretty, she was pretty sure Rhonda drove the neighbors crazy because at any hour of the day, Rhonda was outside bouncing that basketball and taking shots nonstop. She lived and breathed that desire in everything she did. And I know her three coaches definitely wish she would have sprinkled that ethic on everybody, two of which are here tonight, Coach Burns and Coach Lima. It was that perseverance in her that helped inspire the athlete I wanted to be. And she served as a role model for so many of our Durfee fat female athletes and beyond, whether she realizes it or not. She put that same work ethic not only into sports, but into life, graduating in the top 10 at Durfee and going on to receive her Doctor of Pharmacy degree. She was also a little busy this month, literally hanging out with Oprah, apparently. She has photos, ask her. <laughs> on a funny note, and if you played with Rhonda, you will remember this, when she was really focused, she had this look of pure concentration. Eyes narrowed, her tongue sticking out of the side of her mouth, and a purely focused, borderline aggressive grimace on her face. You knew she was serious. <laughs> it was intimidating, and it spoke to the pure intensity Rhonda put into every game in practice. My mom, for some reason, always wanted, was worried she was going to bite off her tongue one of these days when she was in one of those modes. <laughs> I think she tried to warn you a couple times. <laughs> but she was an inspiration to so many of us. So not only a huge congratulations, Rhonda, for such outstanding personal athletic accomplishments, but thank you for serving as an amazing Hilltopper example of hustle, passion, and never giving up on dreams, both on and off the court. Rhonda Pachika. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was, that was awesome. I don't really need to say anything. Um, but I'm honored here to be here tonight and thank everyone um, for, this, for this great award, honor. Um, great to see my coaches. So Mr. Lemur, Mr. Burns, and Mr. C, and so many others. Mr. Lemur, Lima, um, I think back on what you taught me. And uh, the words that come to me is put in the work, 
put the work in and have fun. And, and Mr. Lima always had fun and always, um, I don't know if you remember this, where is he? I can't find him. Um, he'd always like twirl his whistle and think like a five miler run was fun. Now I understand that, but back then it was not fun. Five miles did not seem fun. Mr. Burns. Yeah, man, you were hard on me. <laughs> really hard, and I will never forget that. You know, what, what you taught me, details matter. Do it until you do it right. And so I remember many, many days having to do it over and over and over again. Um, he would not let, let me leave the court. Um, and you, you taught me to always to continue to push myself. Mr. C. I wonder why you never invited me to babysit. I'm a little, I'm like, what happened? I, I don't know there. But uh, uh, you taught me um, sometimes stop listening to Mr. Burns and play your game. So I really appreciated that. But I think you were officially my social worker in high school because I needed it. Um, hey, Ed Durfee, being from Fall River, built who I am today. In the, and I always talk about mindset one of grit, determination, and just get it done with no excuses. I'm proud of where I came from, that I'm from here, and the amazing people who coached me that I just talked about, but most importantly, the friends that are around my table tonight who pushed me, Nate and Eric and John. You never treated me like I was different or I was a girl. You always were tough on me and pushed me on the playground. <laughs> um, but you always pushed me to be a better athlete, and thank you for that. There's no way I could have played Division I basketball without that experience I had at Durfee, the coaches, and the friends that pushed me along the way. I still have that mindset, and I use it in the business world. Thanks to my teammates here tonight, who we may not be running on a basketball court, but we are sure winning for patience. And I appreciate the mindset that you continue to teach me because it matters, both in my professional life and in my personal life. Last but not least, I do want to thank my amazing wife who is here tonight. There's absolutely no way I could do my job and be a parent to our four and two year old. Beautiful children. I'm not quite sure if they're going to be athletes, so I'm still a little worried. When my four year old told me she doesn't like to sweat, it like <laughs> killed me. But you make me better every day and I am very grateful for you. Thank you so much for this honor. I'm beyond grateful to be here. And let's go, Durfee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome longtime Durfee head, uh, hockey coach Steve Moore to the stage to induct one of his players, Kevin Narciso. Good evening, everybody. And uh, first of all, on my behalf and on behalf of Coach Costa, we'd like to congratulate all the inductees uh, into the Hall of Fame. An honor well deserved. Uh, you have provided the Durfee community with many great achievements and precious memories. And tonight, you take your place and join many of the great Durfee athletes of the, past, of the past into the Hall of Fame. So again. Congratulations. When the uh, Durfee Hall of Fame Committee posted on social media the inductees, I scanned through the names and I said, I recognize all the names. And I had the opportunity to actually see some of you perform. And it was a pleasure to watch you in action. But I went further. I had to go back and read the write-ups. And when I read the write-ups on all the inductees, Many things I did not know about them until I read the write-ups, and I was impressed. Actually, I was very impressed. You dominated your sports. So, to all you dominators that are being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight, congratulations again. Now, during my 16 years of coaching varsity ice hockey, at Durfee High School, I had the honor and pleasure 
of coaching young student athletes who always represented our program and our high school with class. I am honored to be granted the privilege of introducing one of my players tonight into the Durfee Hall of Fame. So tonight I say congratulations to Kevin Narciso for an honor well deserved. So let me tell you some things about Kevin. First of all, he captained the Hilltoppers in both his junior and senior years. He just had leadership qualities. Kevin was a leader. He was the best leader, both on and off the ice. What is the best leader? Best leader brings teammates up instead of putting them down. Best leader listens more, talks less. Best leader, lead by example. Best leader, do the right thing when no one is watching. So I thought, how can I best describe the reflections that Kevin had on his teammates and coaching staff? I'll describe it in a few simple words. Commitment, supportive, confident, competitive, reliable, respectful, and a winner. One thing was automatic with Kevin. On game night, he always walked into that locker room with his A game. He always gave 105%, nothing less. He played on the power play, killed penalties, and he always got the job done. Another thing, it wasn't easy, because when we played a, pre a pretty competitive schedule, sometimes people would criticize, like, why are you playing these teams? Well, it made us stronger. When we played the teams in our conference, like a strong Brockton and a strong New Bedford, playing the Austin Preps, the Chelmsfords, those strong teams, they made us better. They made us play fast. And that proved pretty effective for us in our conference play. In his senior year, he led his team to 18 consecutive wins, which is a dirty hockey record. 18 consecutive wins. And also the number one seed in the Division I South Sectionals. This was in his senior year, I believe. Uh, the 18 consecutive wins is definitely a school record, and it's something that he and his teammates can be very proud of. Also, in his senior year, he got the game-winning goal against a very strong Brockton team up at the Asia Franken Brockton. Trust me, going into Brockton was always challenging. Their teams were very strong, and every time we went in there, we were like the underdogs. But not that night. I still can remember Kevin breaking in on that Brockton goaltender and popping it by him and got the game-winning goal as we clinched the Big Three championship. It was a very, very strong team that year. Their 18 wins, they went 4-0 in Big Three. Uh, they outscored their opponents in the four games, 19-6. to Pretty dominating. Also, in his senior year, Challenge Cup against Bishop Conley, Two to one going into the third period, and then Kevin took over in the third period. He ended up the game with four scoring points, and we went on to a convincing seven to one victory. He was a four-year varsity player, one of only eight players to be in the Durfee 100-point club. His career statistics, 69 goals, 53 assists, 122 scoring points. And he ranks third on the Durfee all-time scoring list behind Hall of Famers Bobby Raposa and Scott Santos. Four-time Challenge Cup champion, three-time Fall River Herald News All-Star, two-time MIAA tournament participant, and we also tucked in while we were going a, a Challenge Cup 
Uh, well, I already said that, so I'm not going to repeat it again. So, on behalf of the, myself, Coach Costa, your former teammates, and past and future players, we say thank you for your contribution to the Diffie Hockey program. So, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Kevin up, and congratulations on a job well done. So good evening, everyone. Oops, sorry, I'm a little shorter than these guys. Um, <laughs> um, I want to first off thank the uh, Durfee Hall of Fame for this prestigious honor and inducting me into the Hall of Fame. Um, ever since I was a little kid, um, you know, I've always dreamt about being inducted into this hall. I knew it was the best athletes, the best of the best, um, and I wanted to be one of those when I played at Durfee. Um, to Coach Warren, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to play for Durfee Hockey. It took a huge responsibility when I took that on, and I knew it was a big responsibility uh, when you picked me to play all four years and be the captain on your team. You taught me about leadership, accountability, respect. Um, these are some of the traits that Steve has instilled in his hockey players as a coach and always represent Durfee at the highest level and standard. Uh, to Coach Bob Costa, thank you for always motivating me through hard work on the ice and on the practice uh, facility by getting our skating legs in at the end of practice, which we all loved, um, which built a no-quit attitude on our team, pushing his plays and getting us ready to compete against the best every night. Coach Costa's pregame speeches have uh, lived within me all these years, and when I have been faced with adversity in my life, I think about how Coach Mora and Coach Costa would guide and prepare, prepare me to, to move forward in my life. Uh, to my teammates, thank you for always being there by my side and putting in the work uh, so we could be the best team when we stepped out on the ice. Uh, thanks for pushing me at practice or talking me up in games to get, the, get me to perform at my highest level. Um, thank you and I love you all. Um, to the late coach Bob Gagnon, may you rest in peace. Uh, you are missed tremendously in our community for getting kids together and teaching them how to love this game of hockey and at the same time making friends for life and become family. Um, coach Brian Bouchard, uh, you taught me how to get my body in shape to compete at the highest level. I was undersized, but it didn't stop you from teaching me to work out harder in the gym and to practice my game to be able to dominate against the bigger players I would be faced with. This is, this is something that helped me throughout my playing career at Durfee and beyond. Thank you. Uh, to the athletic trainers, Tammy Robichaud and Paul Peliquin, um, I want to thank you guys for always being there for us and helping us get our bodies ready to compete every day. Um, also, at times, the training room was a venting room for all of us, so thank you for listening and giving us good advice. Um, to my mom and dad, thank you for always being there for me and teaching me how to be an admirable person. People uh, who would look up to and love and respect. Um, you taught me how to respect others and to never quit on my dreams. Um, those many long car rides, two and three games a weekend all over the state, these were some of the sacrifices my parents made for me in order for me to fulfill my dream of playing ice hockey. Um, never missing any of the games and waking up early mornings to be at the rink at 6 a.m. Mom and Dad, you're in the Hall of Fame too. Thank you and I love you. Uh, quick story, uh, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, so as a kid growing up in Forever, I fell in love with the game of hockey at such a young age. I would spend hours outside with my friends or by myself practicing scenarios that I might be faced with on and off the ice. Uh, working through some of the scenarios that I might have been struggling with. To elevate my game to be the best player on the ice all the time, I will never forget the Challenge Cup, Durfee versus Conley.
for the city championship. Me and my dad went to the game. I was 14 years old. Durfee was getting beat up and losing the game to Conley in the city championship. I looked at my dad and he asked me, where do you want to go to high school next year? And I answered him, I said, I want to go to Durfee. And my father kind of chuckled and was looking at me like I'm a little crazy. <laughs> Um, he's like, you want to go to that, t that school? I'm like, absolutely. Um, and it was just so funny how, um, I, and he goes, so he asked me, he goes, um, you know, why, what's the reason behind it? And I said, well, when I go to a Durfee, I'm never going to lose the Challenge Cup in all four years that I play there. I could promise you that. So funny little story. Um, I went to Durfee. We never lost the Challenge Cup all four years that I was there. Every time I put that jersey on, I knew it made the right, I might made the right decision. And I also knew that I rep, um, had to represent the name on the front just as much as the name on the back. Playing at Durfee um, taught me a um, couple of things that I had carried with me throughout my playing career and life. Work hard, never quit, follow your dreams. Um, I also just want to finally thank you once again for inducting me into the Durfee Hall of Fame. Thank you. At this time, I invite Jim Santoro to the stage to introduce his daughter, Emma Santoro. Thank you, Jeff. It's certainly my honor and privilege to introduce my daughter, Emma Santoro Jacinto, this evening. As a member of the class of 2009, Emma distinguished herself is one of the most accomplished athletes in the school's history. Her remarkable career is celebrated with numerous awards, record-breaking performances, and a legacy that continues to inspire young athletes today. In Emma's freshman year, she was an immediate, uh, had an immediate impact in the pool, breaking Durfee High School records in numerous events and secured first place in the 100 freestyle at the South Sectional, breaking a 25-year record. Her outstanding performance continued in, in the years to follow and led her to become a two-time individual state champion, winning the 100 freestyle her sophomore year and the 100 breast style, breast stroke rather, um, <laughs> her, uh, her senior year. She currently remains uh, the record holder at Durfee in all but two events, which is a testament to her enduring legacy. Emma was recognized as a Big Three Conference All-Star, Eastern Mass League All-Star, South Coast Regional All-Star, and Team MVP all four years at Durfee. Additionally, she was a four-year qualifier in both the sectionals and state meets, uh, showcasing her talents and competitiveness on the larger stage. She was a Boston Herald and Boston Globe All-Star twice, and a three-time high school All-American. Emma's contributions to her team and her exceptional individual achievements have left a lasting legacy at Durfee High School. After graduation, Emma went on uh, to Colgate University and continued to excel at the Division I, as a Division I swimmer. Currently, Emma's giving back. She works at Durfee as a guidance counselor and serves as the assistant swim coach, inspiring future generations of student and athletes to strive for greatness. There's a country song, It's Been a Year, by Ashley Cook. Wow, Emma, it has been a year. Uh, you earned your master's degree, leading the, now leading the early college program at Durfee, getting married, Durfee at Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, and may I say, the best is yet to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Durfee Hall, of fame uh, members, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce my daughter, Emma Santoro Jacinto, to the Durfee BMC <laughs> Athletic Hall of Fame Class 2024. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dad, for the introduction. 
Um, when I was asked to pick someone to introduce me, I knew I wanted my dad to be that person. While my coaches and teammates had an incredible influence over my swimming career, my dad and mom have truly been my biggest fans and supporters, and I am forever grateful to them. I would also like to thank my husband, a former New Bedford High School swimmer. I know, <laughs> a rival we, we make work. <laughs> <laughs> he is always my biggest hype man, and he wholeheartedly understands all the ways in which the sport of swimming is who I am and how it has shaped my life. I'm truly honored to be inducted into the Durfee High School Hall of Fame class of 2024, alongside such remarkable individuals. Being here tonight and receiving this honor, I'm filled with gratitude for the experiences and opportunities that shaped my journey at Durfee and beyond. A special thanks to the Hall of Fame committee for putting on this event tonight and for working hard to ensure that Hilltopper greatness continues to be celebrated year after year. Reflecting on my time as a high school swimmer, I am so proud to be a Durfee Hilltopper and represent Fall River in this incredible sport. I remember my freshman year vividly, the excitement, the nerves, and the thrill of breaking school records and truly feeling a part of a team in a sport that's traditionally individualized. It was surreal to make an impact so quickly and to break a 25-year-old South sectional record in the 100 freestyle. Those moments ignited a passion in me that only grew over the years. Being a part of the Durfee High School swim team was the first time where I really felt like I belonged and where I really learned and began to embody the mentality of teamwork, support, and hard work. All of the women that I swam alongside taught me so much, not only about the sport of swimming, but how to understand people who came from different backgrounds and the importance of seeing the best in my teammates in order for them to see the best in me and to help push each other towards greatness. Winning an individual state championship title twice, holding multiple records, and being recognized as an all-star were incredible experiences but they wouldn't have been possible without the support of my teammates, coaches, and family. I'm especially grateful to Sue Kitchen and Bob Fitton for mentoring me in and out of the pool, pushing me to be my best, and for believing in me even when I doubted myself. Now as a guidance counselor at Durfee and the assistant swim coach, I'm dedicated to giving back to the community that's given me so much. I hope to inspire the next generation of athletes to dream big, work hard, and never underestimate your potential. I wanna give a shout out to all the coaches, teachers, and administrators who are here tonight. Just remember, even on the toughest of days, you play such an important role in the lives of your student athletes. And to the student athletes who are here, I look forward to continuing to watch you excel in your sports and beyond. Thank you again to the Hall of Fame committee, to my fellow inductees, family, friends, and everyone here tonight. This honor is not just mine. It belongs to everyone who has been a part of my journey. I look forward to watching our school continue to thrive and to seeing what our future athletes will achieve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stage, Michaela Gagne, as she inducts her coach, Flo Lima. Oh, Flo. <laughs> Actually, you have some special guests here, I think. You guys can come on in. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Being theatrical. Come on in, guys. <laughs> they have to keep them way out there. I think they're being loud. <laughs> oh, I got the I got the one second. <laughs> they're composing themselves. <laughs> ah, here they come. <laughs> Flo's current team. <laughs> Let's
Let's start with the fact that you can't talk about the history of soccer in Fall River without thinking about Flo Lima. Flo was one of the founders of Fall River Youth Soccer Association in 1990, which has served thousands of youth and their families, hundreds of which were coached by Flo through the years at every level of play. You can still see him at the soccer fields on Saturday mornings cheering on his granddaughter. I had the pleasure of meeting Coach Lima at 10 years old with his daughter when he and Charlie Sunderland formed the first ever Fall River girls travel soccer team. For over 30 years, he remains my favorite coach, a comment I have heard from so many other players through the years. Flo also opens the indoor Omni Sports Complex with his wife, Bev. I remember going to help paint that place at its inception and the indoor soccer memories continue for so many there to this day. Flo was the first Durfee JV girls soccer coach in 1993 and moved into the varsity coaching spot in 1995, following Charlie Sunderland who's here, building an incredible program with a legacy of numerous big three wins, state tournament appearances, and an impressive overall coaching record. In a bittersweet moment, Flo returned to his alma mater in, at Diamond in 2006, where he created and built the girls' soccer program from the ground up and remains not only the only varsity coach today uh, for that team, but also an outstanding educator. Flo has always been amazing at helper, helping players break down skills and building team strategy. He has an ability to push you to your maximum potential and then help you recognize you still have more. In every coaching moment, you can see the love Flo has for the beautiful game, and he instills that excitement in his teams. For five years, I had the privilege of coaching by his side, and not many people get the opportunity to not only coach one of their heroes, but coach their own daughters, one formally, one informally. <laughs> Something important I learned is that Coach Lima still recycles a lot of his timeless Flo-isms, that's what I call them, how many here played for Flo? You can raise your hands over there. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on. <laughs> so, tell me if you've heard some of these. Number one rule, there were no boyfriends or girlfriends during soccer season. <laughs> if Flo couldn't remember your name, you were married until further notice. <laughs> if your name was too long to yell on the soccer field, he would simply make up a nickname, and it usually stuck. Hence why I'm still Mac to this day. <laughs> uh, telling you that while you might have a strange urge over the weekend, don't get married. <laughs> the best part about heading the ball is also popping pimples. <laughs> nice chip, Chippy. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Sometimes you don't like poop, but you need to eat a poop sandwich. <laughs> and I made that PG rated, because it's another version. <laughs> Wishing you nightmares about the goal you missed in front of a wide open net. <laughs> you know, still, right? <laughs> and my favorite that I do share with my own players is that the only reason you have a left foot in life is for soccer. <laughs> Boy, have we all laughed with flow through the years. But aside from the, stunny, the funny stuff we all remember, it was the little things that truly made him great. Asking you what you had for breakfast, recognizing if you were off or struggling and checking in on you, reminding you to be kind and humble, and to this day, dedicating so much of his mental energy and physical energy to his girls, his team, and their well-being first and foremost. So congratulations to you, Flo. You are a Durfee legend, among other things, and certainly an honorary Hilltopper for being the amazing coach and human being that you are. Flo Lima. <laughs> Surprise, outstanding girls. Thank you very much. You don't know what this means to me. Thank you. 
<laughs> Today, my heart was glad to see my former players here. Uh, Michaela, we work at the same school, so I see her often. Um, Beth Pulaski, Shannon Pulaski, um, Leanne, Rhonda, and Amanda. I think that's all I saw today. Maybe more if I forgot you, I'm sorry. Who? <laughs> Corey, Corey, I'm sorry, Corey. Okay. Uh, I'm not a Durfee Hilltop, I never played for Durfee. My family at that table all went to Durfee, but I coach at Durfee. Okay. Um, congratulations to all that are being inducted tonight. I am deeply honored and stand before you tonight as I accept this incredible recognition into the Durfee Hall of Fame. As I look around this room filled with familiar faces and fond memories, I am overwhelmed with gratitude. First and foremost, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to my family, to my wife Beverly, and my children, who have been my rock, my cheerleaders, my source of strength, through every practice, every game, and all the long days. Your unwavering support has been my foundation. I could not have achieved any of this without your love and encouragement. To my parents, Gilles and Maria, for migrating to America, thank you very much. <laughs> Would have been a whole different life if I wasn't here. <laughs> Yeah, as my brother and I often say to each other, hmm, it would have been pretty funky as living in the Azores. But... <laughs> All right. They taught me, my brother Gil, my sister Margaret, and my sister Cidalia, the values of hard work and perseverance. <clears throat> Thank you for instilling in us that if you're going to do anything, something, regardless of what it is, do it to the best of your ability. So that's the attitude I take in coaching. I love to teach the game. Uh, my brother and I, we were good athletes, but my father being uh, a migrant, Portuguese guy, uh, ironic little story, he only watched me play ice hockey once. I don't think he ever saw my brother play. Did he, go? No, okay. But later in life, he retires. Every time I go see dad, which is about you know, every other day, he's watching soccer on TV. I said, damn, I played all high school. You didn't come see me one game. Okay, but that's all right. We'll let it slide. I've been in council and I'm good. Thank you to my daughters, Holly, Nina, and my son, Michael, for starting this journey together with me as their coach. We started with the Far River Youth Soccer. And Carmen, who due to her age difference uh, from her siblings, also played the beautiful game of soccer. Thank you, guys. Now, special thanks to these gentlemen here, because when I started coaching, I didn't have a coaching style. I didn't know what that was. I was having fun at Fall River Youth Soccer coaching the U-10s and just kicking a ball around. And Mr. Sunderland evidently was watching me, and I think he liked the way I handled the children. So, Mr. Charlie Sunderland, thank you for trusting me to be your assistant coach. By giving me the opportunity to coach at the high school level, it also changed my career path. It gave me the confidence to become a teacher. This is my 26th year of teaching. Mr. Sunderland, this is all because of you. Thank you. And I don't think the following coaches know they played a huge part in developing my coaching style. I didn't have one. So I watched and learned how they coached and handled their players and developed my own. Okay, Mr. Tom Burns, showing me timing and spacing and demanding perfection at practice and in that games. Thank you, sir. And Mr. John Santos, for game planning, playing with passion, for the game and always demanding excellence from all of his players. And Mr. Sunderland for his patience, 
his attention to detail, and his empathy towards his players. And Mr. Youngie Martin, my high school soccer coach, who taught me more about playing soccer than any other coach during my junior year. So I often use the same verbiage that he used to use when we played for him. To my former players and my present players, you are the reason that I stand here tonight. I believe we know our X's and O's. We know how to break down game plans. We know how to devise game plans. And if you're Mr. Fernandes, you work on a game plan all week, and then on a way bus trip to Brockton, you change it. <laughs> I love you, Mr. Fernandes, wherever you are. OK? But uh, if you don't have the players to execute what you want done, they make good players make good coaches, I believe. And for that, thank you, people. I am constantly amazed by your talent, your determination, and your spirit. Together, we have shared triumphs, challenges, victories, and defeats. But more, more than anything, we have shared a journey that has been the highlight of my professional life. Your commitment to excellence, your teamwork, your resilience have inspired me in ways I could never fully express. You are the true embodiment of Durfee pride and what it means to be part of the Durfee high school soccer program. Coaching is not just about drawing up plays or managing a game. It's about mentoring, guiding, growing alongside incredible individuals and making lasting memories. Lasting memories. I remember, <laughs> that's what we make, memories, okay? After all is settled and done, all the awards that get dust, but you have the memories. Some that come to mind is my goalkeeper at the time, Denise Souza, during one practice decided it was a good idea to stick a soccer ball down in the back of her shorts, but the problem was she couldn't get it out. <laughs> So Flo, Flo being Flo said, okay, let's, let's do the drills. But coach, my ball is stuck. I said, too bad, do it. At, make sure it stays and you're gonna do the drills. Awesome. <laughs> Another memory is we are playing, or uh, we played at Alboro at, at Durfee and there's a commotion outside. I run outside. And there's Lee Yang hanging on a bus window throwing punches at the Attleboro players <laughs> because they called her a bad name. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and my favorite memory is, ladies, remember this? Uh, locker room was the boys' men's room. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> oh, great memories all. First time we won the championship, we had no idea, or the kids had no idea how to celebrate. It was new to us. So we have pictures of the team afterwards, it was raining, but we got mud all over our faces, Rhonda with a silly bandana around her face, smiling big time. <laughs> so about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, we pull in to my driver at the house, and there's a bunch of girls there uh, still celebrating but they ripped down a Florence street sign and brought it to my house. <laughs> I still have it in a shed. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> now, and another memory, 2006, like Michaela said, I left to go grudg grudgingly. I was having a great time at Durfee coaching, I really was. And Mr. Bentley, which my principal at the time said, Flo, we have enough signatures, they want to start a program. You are going to come over and coach it, right? I said, no. He goes, but you work here, so you are coming over. I said, oh, okay. So, bittersweet moment for me, but I made the move. But the very first varsity game I had, we lost to Martha's Vineyard 7 nothing, And I said, what the hell did I do? <laughs> but it's better now. It's better now. It's my 17th year there, so we're making new memories there. Thank you. <laughs> to everyone in this, involved in this recognition, thank you. To the Hall of Fame committee, the school administration, 
and the countless sponsors of Durfee High School Athletics. Your dedication to celebrating our achievements and honoring the past is truly appreciated. As I reflect on my journey, I am filled with pride, not just for the accolades, but for the people who have walked this path with me. This moment is a testament to a collective effort of everyone who has been part of the adventure. Thank you for all for being here tonight and for making this such a memorable occasion. I am forever grateful and deeply honored to be inducted into the Durfee High School Hall of Fame. And one more thank you. This is the first speech I've ever written. Well, not quite. Usually I've had many banquets and award ceremonies and everything's from what goes in here comes out here and shoots. I never write anything down. But this one I did. Thank you, chat GPT. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before everyone leaves, once again, thank you all for coming. We hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I would invite all the Hall of Fame members to come back up for group photos. Your plaques are up here as well. Uh, you can take pictures with the, with the uh, Hall of Fame nameplates and boards. And thank you all for coming once again. Thank you. <laughs>